Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com where I help you design smarter, not harder. Something I noticed the other day is once you kind of find your way in Photoshop and sort of know what you're doing, you kind of stop experimenting with things and in doing that you might be missing out on some really cool filters or workflows uh, that you could benefit from. So in this video, I wanna cover five underrated filters in Photoshop that you can incorporate into your work. Let's get started. Okay, number one, this is my favorite filter ever. I use it every day. It is shadows and highlights. For some reason, it's not in the filter dropdown category over here, but instead in the image adjustments and then all the way down here to shadows and highlights. So it's kind of a hidden gem and finding out about this has really just changed the game for me. So like I said, I use this every day. It works especially well when you're thresholding or half toning something, but I'll get into that in just a second here. So I have this photo that I did in the midst of working for hard jewelry and we'll just use this as our test subject. So we'll go up to image adjustments, shadows and highlights. So it's a very simple layout. It essentially lets you control the intensity or brightness of your shadows and highlights separately. So if I wanted to bump up the shadows of this image, I could do that super easily. And same thing with the highlights down here. If I wanted to get more detail in these highlights or just bring them down a bit, I could do that with the slider here. But you can also click show more options down here and that'll give you a much more comprehensive UI for this filter. So I'll reset these all back to zero and I'll explain a little bit about them. So obviously we have the amount here, which lets you control again, the intensity of the shadows or the highlights apart from each other. There's also this tone slider here, which works in tandem with the amounts. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but you'll see here if I turn the amount up, it won't do anything until I turn the tone up. So it's sort of like an opacity filter on the amount, but then again, it only does that for highlights. So if I do the same thing for shadows, I don't need to do any adjustments to the tone to see it, but adjusting the tone will pretty much make that effect way more visible and blown out. So pretty much just view the amount and tone as interworking parameters. And there's also this radius parameter down here, which lets us control sort of the bleed of that effect into the other tones of the image. So let's say I turn these shadows all the way up and I turn the radius all the way up. You can see the higher the radius, the more it affects the image as a whole. And the lower the radius, the more it affects um, the sort of minute details in the image, especially here around my arm. You can see if I turn the radius slider up, the drop shot around this very apparent break in color and value uh, pretty much increases and if I turn it all the way down, you can see that it sort of tightens up the spread in the finer areas. So this doesn't look too hot, obviously, and you could use this for photos as is, as like a subtle effect. Obviously, you want to play with these settings and find something that you like and that works well with the photo. But most of the reason I use this filter is when I'm thresholding or half toning something to get more detail out of that image. So I have this example image here, and if I go and add a threshold adjustment, which I've conveniently placed in a folder here for me, and I also add some grain overlay under that, uh, just so we could get more detail out of the image in general, which if you watched like any other video on my channel, you already know to put the grain overlay under the threshold. But anyway, we're losing a ton of detail in the shadows of this image. And I want to get that back without just bringing up the levels of the image as a whole. So if you see, if I go into the levels panel here and just make the image brighter, we're making the shadows brighter, but we're also blowing out the highlights and that's not what we want. So instead we can go up to image adjustments, shadows and highlights. And from here, all I have to do is turn up the amount on the shadows here and that affects the shadows in isolation. So we bring all that detail back into the shadows, but also we're not overblowing the highlights or messing with the midtones too much. So like I said, this is my favorite filter since I'm always thresholding things. I use this filter pretty much every time to get that detail back from overblown uh, highlights or too dark shadows. So yeah, amazing tool. Number two, minimum and maximum. These filters are in the filter dropdown in Photoshop. So that's in filter, other, maximum and minimum. And you've probably never used these because they appear pretty much useless at a distance, but they're actually absolute lifesavers when working with layer masks. These two filters only affect black and white values on the canvas. And obviously layer masks are only with black and white. So these two filters allow you to really fine tune your layer masks, which I'll show you how right now. So the minimum filter pretty much shrinks areas of white values and expands areas of black values. And the maximum filter does just the opposite. Let's say you're working with a photo here, such as this really funny photo of Shaq and you have this really annoying white halo on the photo that sometimes you get when you're working with a PNG or even when you just select subject something in Photoshop you get a weird halo around it that just doesn't look too nice so what can you do you're not gonna go painting this white halo away by hand you're gonna use the minimum and maximum filter. So first I'd grab a selection of this by pressing on the layer thumbnail while holding command. And that'll select our subject here or select the layer. And then I'll make that into a layer mask on the layer by clicking the layer mask icon down here. Cool. Now we have our layer mask intact. 
So this is what that looks like. And we pretty much just wanna shrink this area of white value so that it excludes or cuts off that little white halo that's on the image. So again, we could do that with the minimum filter. So I'll click on the layer mask here and I'll go up to filter, other and then minimum and now i could choose a pixel radius of how much i want that white area to shrink so to do away with this little halo here all i have to do is use a radius of about four or five pixels so now we've kind of squeezed that white halo out of our selection in the layer mask so if i turn that off you can see the white halo is there and with the layer mask we pretty much just pushed it in again shrunk that area of white and removed that white halo pretty easily. Like I said, the minimum and maximum filters work exclusively with black and white values. So you can pretty much use it anywhere you see fit that uh, has black and white values. So obviously layer masks are a huge thing with that, but even when you're designing in black and white or using threshold or anything, it can also come in handy. So check out this graphic I did in a video a while back. Obviously this is only black and only white. Uh, so let's say I kind of want to get rid of these really minute details here, these really fine pieces of grain. I can do that by expanding the areas of white or shrinking the areas of black, and that would be by using the maximum filter. So let's go up to filter, offset, maximum, and bang. Now we're expanding the areas of white, shrinking the areas of black, and not only does it give me this really cool stippled effect, we also lose details in the areas where I wanted to lose it. So those areas of really fine grain, here's the before and the after. And obviously I have this radius parameter here so I can fine tune this effect to my liking. So these just come in handy in a variety of situations. Just in the last video I did, I was working on that Led Zeppelin graphic and I had this frame framing the photos that I was using, but this frame that I drew ultimately ended up being a little too thick to match with the rest of the graphic. So what I could do was grab a selection of this frame by holding command and clicking the layer thumbnail. And then I can make a layer mask of that again by clicking the layer mask down here. And then since I wanna make this frame smaller, I'll shrink that area of white in this layer mask. So I'll go up to filter, other, and then minimum. And now I could shrink this line work to be a lot thinner, which I thought looked way better on the graphic I was making. So I could shrink it by maybe like eight pixels and boom. Now we have a thinner frame and that is exactly what I wanted. So here's the after, here's the before, pretty neat. Underrated filter number three is high pass. I feel like a lot of people know that this filter exists, but they're not really sure what to use it for. So I'm gonna go over that right now. To put it really simply, it's a great way to sharpen your image or denoise your image or do any retouching on a portrait, which it is very powerful for. That's because it pretty much allows you to separate the frequencies of your image, which I'll show you what that means right now. So the high pass filter is in filter other high pass and once we click on this the results are pretty jarring probably scared of what you're looking at right now but to explain this this radius parameter here pretty much lets us go from our really high frequencies to our really low frequencies and by that i mean the high frequencies of the image would be the really fine details the things that are sharp and defined in the image so obviously the texture of skin hair things like that and the low frequencies or the frequencies all the way up here would be pretty much the overarching tone or values of the image a good way to think about that is thinking of the high frequencies frequencies, the details as texture and the low frequencies as light or value. So how can we actually use that? Uh, the first use would be to sharpen the image with high pass. So you can do that by duplicating your layer. I'll do command J right here. I'll go up to filter other high pass. And since I want to sharpen this or get more detail out of it, I want to pick a pretty high frequency number here or a low pixel value. And that's going to pretty much isolate the texture in this. And that way, when I click OK, and I set this to overlay, it's going to overlay that extra texture on the image and really sharpen it up in those fine areas, those minute details. So if I zoom in here on the texture of the skin and the hair, those are much more sharp now than they were before. If I turn this layer off, you can see that difference pretty clearly. And just for display purposes, if you really want to get sharp with your image, you could duplicate this a bunch of times. And I mean, you probably don't want this, but just so you know. Now something that's also really cool about this is you don't have to use it to sharpen your image. You could also use it to pretty much blur or denoise your image. So right now I have that high frequency, high pass layer set to overlay. And let's say I wanna sort of get rid of the texture instead of enhancing it. All I have to do is invert this layer. So that's command I on your keyboard. And now we've pretty much removed all that fine texture. So if I turn this off and on, you can see exactly what it's doing. It's pretty much counteracting the detail in this image and pretty much blurring out all that minute detail. When I zoom out, this image looks kind of blurred as a whole, but this is really good for image retouching if you wanna get, kind of get your hands dirty with this and go into the layer mask and paint in this effect where you want it. So anywhere on the skin where you think the texture could be sort of blurred out or obscured, you can go into the layer mask on this layer and just paint that in. Or you can get more advanced with this and do two different high pass layers. So I'm gonna delete this one right here and I'll duplicate this first layer twice. And on the top layer, I'll go up to filter other high pass and I'll do the same radius we had before. Something pretty low, something that gets out those really high frequencies. Press OK on that. We'll turn that layer to overlay. And then on the second layer down here, we'll go up to filter, other high pass again. 
and this time choose a higher radius, so something in the medium frequencies where you see the values and light of the image sort of creeping in, and you also get that texture as well. So I'll go with 20 here, and I'll press OK, and I'll set that to overlay, and right now this is extremely sharpening up our image, but if I invert this middle layer, now we're sort of flattening the image here, getting more of an airbrush effect, and of course we have this high frequency layer on top that's bringing back in those really fine details, which I can turn the opacity down on this to something like 50, so it's not too present, but obviously we want some texture of the skin in there, which is why we have this layer to make it look a little bit more realistic and then down here on this middle layer this is where you could do all your retouching so i'll make a layer mask here i'll invert her so i can paint in this effect where i want i can take my soft brush and paint wherever over her skin to get rid of those finer details so this is a very sloppy job but i'm sure you see the use factor here check out the before and the after so yeah pretty cool stuff number four is camera raw filter camera raw is pretty much a mini lightroom inside of photoshop it's super super powerful if you're working with raw or high quality photos this is great to do some mini color grading or just adjustments to the image as a whole but besides being useful for actual photography it's also a great filter to put some finishing adjustments on your work when i finish a designer poster i always 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 open up camera raw and do some final tweaks with the color maybe add some grain and effects whatnot before i call it done so i have this poster here that I want to do some final adjustments on. I'll go up to filter, camera raw filter over here. Pretty much the ultimate filter. I mean, it has everything ingrained in it. You obviously have all your exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, and whatnot. You can also play with the color, such as the temperature, the white balance, the tint of your image. It's pretty much standard to any color grading software or any color grading that you might do with video or photo. You also have your curves down here, effects such as grain. Clarity even, dehaze, which are also pretty powerful that I like to use sometimes. Color mixer, which lets you change the hue, saturation, and luminance of individual colors. And you also have your color reels down here and color grading and much, much, much more. So like I said, absolute powerhouse for doing some final adjustments on your poster or design or whatever it might be. So let's say I wanted to turn the exposure up, the contrast up, the highlights down, whatever, change the temperature, make it warmer, or maybe the resin oranges are too saturated here. I can go into the color mixer here and turn that down individually. There's also this detail perimeter here, which has a very comprehensive sharpening filter and also this very good noise reduction filter that I use all the time. So yeah, any finishing adjustments that you need to do, you gotta do it in camera raw. And last but not least, we have number five, Field Blur. I used this in my last video if you watched that. It's very versatile. I use it for a very cool spray paint effect. But this can be used pretty much anywhere. Anywhere you want blur, Field Blur has got you. We got this photo here that I'm going to be using as an example. To find Field Blur, all you do is go into Filter, Blur Gallery, it's pretty obvious, and go to Field Blur over here. And the really cool thing about it is that it lets you blur based on points that you set. So you can create a mesh of different blur values all over your image. And to me, that makes it way better than Gaussian Blur if you're going for more of a stylized look. We're just trying to keep some detail in the image. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You make a point, you set the blur value for that point. So since I only have one point and blur the whole image, but let's say I make another point over here and I only set the blur value to 15. It'll pretty much blend the 15 blur value to the higher blur value over here. And of course, you could do that with as many points as you want. Absolute banger of an effect, especially when you add some grain or noise above the image that you're blurring, which I have in this group down here, just a grain overlay on top of everything. This also works really, really well in tandem with gradient maps. So I've gathered a couple gradient maps here just to show you what that would look like. Pretty much anything you use blur on, especially field blur with grain, it's gonna look amazing with gradient maps on top of it. So that's just a really cool stylized effect. The blur combo with the grain and the gradient map is a timeless combo. And field blur just helps you get that really, really perfect and obviously custom set blur onto your image. You can also do this with text. So I have a pretty similar setup here. I've got my text layer here at the bottom. It is rasterized and merged with the background. I've got my grain overlay over here. And I've got a gradient map on top. And now if I go to the filter here and blur gallery, field blur. Now watch this. I'll take my point, put it anywhere, add blur to this increase the blur value that is pretty damn cool and obviously i can set as many points as i want so if i want the type to be more legible here than it is there i can set a blur value lower on the left end here or at the bottom here and that gets us that really really cool spray paint or ink bleed or just cool blur effect on our text here so yeah extremely powerful filter that you can get some really really cool effects with whether that's with type or with images in my opinion that is the best blur out of all the blurs all right that's pretty much it guys let me know if you enjoyed this video and let me know if you were caught off guard by my lack of facial hair if you learned anything or got any value from this video be sure to like and subscribe i post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer don't forget to sign up for the mailing list at the bottom of my website that'll give you access to a ton of free design assets and exclusive discounts on my products thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace out